Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of No Big Deal Podcast. This is episode 32. Y'all know who this is. This is my brother, Encyclopedia, the NBA Encyclopedia. Ray, welcome back, my brother. Happy to be here, man. Very excited. Um, it's, Thank it's you for having me. Have. Oh, no problem, man. Thank you for the bottom of my heart for even for even joining me today, man. Teaching me some knowledge about the basketball game. So we got a good, we got a lot of feedback off our episode we did. So I just want to let y'all know part two of the list is coming real soon. So look forward to that. And uh, Ray's going to redo his list. I know I'm going to redo mine. So I'm just waiting for this yeah. NBA season to be done. So, And I also want to yeah. send a special shout out. Happy birthday to my uncle, Michael Cooper. His birthday was yesterday. I just want to say happy birthday, unk. And um, congratulations to you for getting in that Hall of Fame, man. I'm so proud of you, man. So I just want to say shout out to you, unk, man. I know you're disgusted with my background with the Knicks, but I got to show love to the city first. There so, you, go. you know, but happy birthday to you, man, and, and congratulations on your great milestone. I look forward to it. So, Ray, man, the, the playoffs, the play-ins are starting tonight. Let's start with that. Who do you like in the East play-in? Um, we got Philly versus the Heat, and we got Bulls versus the Hawks. Yep, Sixers versus Heat in Philadelphia. Philadelphia on a like a seven game win streak, I think. Mm -hmm. Playing great. Um, Heat did well in April, five and three for the month. Yeah, I think I think April basketball is really sort of as close to indicative of playoff basketball as you can get because teams mm -hmm. are in crunch time. Yep. Um, I think I had the Sixers in the first game. Uh, so they go on and play the seventh seed in the first round. Um, I just think Joel Embiid coming back, joining that team. Miami has not really had a groove in all year long. Right. I think I think that Philadelphia has that game. Hawks Bulls. Now the Hawks got two nice W's on the Celtics. Mm -hmm. They haven't been playing well since then. Um, it's close. I mean, the Bulls haven't really either, but I'd give it to the Bulls. Um, and then in the rubber match, I guess you could call it the Heat and the Bulls. I'd give it to the Heat, clinching that eighth seed. What about you? I don't want to see the Bulls in any seven game series if I'm a Knicks fan. So I don't want them to be seventh at all. Sure. I'm rooting for the Hawks to win. I feel like the Hawks will be a better, easier. Advance if that makes any sense. Well, wait, you play the seven seed, right? So you'd be up against the way yeah, in Miami. Oh, I don't want to see them either. <laughs> I yeah, don't yeah. want to see neither of them either. But um, if I had to pick, they both two and two. They two and two against each other in the regular season. Heat and the seventy sixers, and I think two of them games they won, and B wasn't playing, right? Oh no, on Christmas Day and B did, play. and the Heat won by six. This is going to be a good matchup, Jimmy versus Embiid. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Bam versus Embiid. Just Bam matchup. versus Embiid, yeah, but I, I feel like Jimmy, Jimmy probably want to get back to that promised land. And you said it's in Philadelphia? Uh, I had the Phil I had Sixers beating the Heat. It, where is they playing at? Oh, they're playing in Philly. Yeah, Philly's a 7 Oh, they're playing in Philly? In Philly, yeah. It, that's a tough out. I mean, I know Miami's – yeah, yeah they're Miami's a tough team. That's going to be interesting. If I was a gambling man, I would pick 76ers, but business-wise, getting the job done, I think he has a lot of fuel power. And um, Yeah, I mean, they definitely – they've proven they have that other gear in the playoffs that they can activate. Yeah. No, I don't know. You know, I mean, hey, having Embiid, uh, you know, he's had a few days, uh, practice, rest, yeah. get back into the groove, I mean – and he hasn't, you know, it, it seems like he really hasn't lost much of his step. Mm -mm, not, not, no, not at all. So I'm know. definitely going to go with. No, I'm going to go with the Heat on that one. Go with the Heat. All right. I'm going to go with the Heat on that one. Right, we're going to lock that in real quick. Yeah, he, I think the Heat can get the job done in Philly, actually. So I'm definitely going to pick that. Well, the good thing is, the you know, the Sixers still have a chance. They play the winner of that Hawks and Bulls game. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. So, 
And I don't think either of those teams have a chance against Philadelphia. Mm -mm. No way. Or the Heat, to be, in my opinion. I don't so think I'll have anything against the Heat either. But, so you uh, have the Hawks beating the Bulls? <laughs> I want the Hawks to beat the Bulls, but I think the Bulls will get it done. And the Bulls will take the AC. Think the Bulls can beat the Sixers? They could. I like the way the Bulls is playing. I like Kobe I White. Think especially, you know, Sunday's game when they play the Knicks. It, it gave me a heart attack a little bit. Like, whew, this is – and this is why I said I don't want to face them at all in the playoffs. So I'm kind of glad we took that second seed. But um, we end up getting that win on Sunday. But I feel like seven games, you don't want to play the Bulls. I don't think nobody would play them. They're a tough team, though. Just Sixers are a tough team. Yeah, Sixers, Sixers are a tough team, too. But can they can they stay healthy, though? They kind of injury right now, too, a little bit. So, this – and they're getting older, too, Ray. Right? I don't know. Playing is one game, though, you know? Mm. Yeah, playing play is one game. game. That's true. One game. That's true. Can they keep it together, beat the – you know, I mean, Heat Sixers is going to be a close game. I don't know if the Bulls got anything for – Joel Embiid, you have to have a real interior presence defensively, you know, to – I mean, no one can really give him the business on offense other than maybe Jokic. And, and, yeah. You know, but defensively, you have to have guys who can really stop him. And I don't know if the Bulls have that. I don't – I mean, I don't know how many teams in the East do other than maybe the Celtics. Um, you know, I, I maybe Orlando has some size. Milwaukee maybe with Brooke Lopez. Not many teams are going to be able to contain him. I mean, he's going to be – it's a big mismatch for a lot of these teams, especially the Bulls are wing-oriented team. That's why they play well against the Knicks. I think it would be bad for the Knicks. I mean, the Knicks are, you know – I mean, Jalen Brunson's an interior scorer. You know, he, most sure. of his game is, is getting, to the, getting to the rack. So, I don't know. You know, it, I mean, it would be tough, but – It would be. But uh... – so I'm hoping like maybe not Miami can knock them out real quick. Just you know. Oh, you it's for thinking, it, but wishful Boston. thinking. You huh? give them to Boston. I got you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Let, let Boston handle that little dirty work, you know. So uh and we have, and we have handled them. So most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, but like I said, as far as the player, I feel like Miami can get it done. I'll pick Miami to win against the 76ers. You got the Bulls beating the Hawks. Who wins between the Sixers and the Bulls? We'll lock up that eighth seed. Sixers. Okay. All right. So, the West, Lakers, Ooh. Pelicans in New Orleans. Tonight. Ah. Tonight. Tonight, uh, yes. Uh, I am rolling with LeBron. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. I'm rolling with LeBron. I'm 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 proud of the Celtics. I mean, I'm not the Celtics. Shit, I'm, excuse me, people. Did not mean to say that. I'm proud of the Pelicans, but you about to come up against a brick wall. So that means the Lakers clinch that seventh seed, and they play against Denver in the first round. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's the the thought, I don't know if that they're going to do this, but if they do throw, not throw the game, you know, if they do lose, they get a chance that eighth seed against OKC. I don't know if they'd be interested in doing that or not, but it'd be a better matchup for them. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think, I think you, uh, you, I think you beat the Pelicans and clinch that four day break till the playoffs start. Yeah. But, that way y'all can get healthy mentally and physically. So you think they could possibly throw the game and play the seven seed and play uh OKC? I mean, the Pelicans are a good team. They're deep. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, they just lost the Lakers in the last game. So I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. Zion, I mean, you know, the the reality for Zion is is how much playoff experience does that guy have? It's not much because he's not healthy often. Exactly. If he, you know, if he had uh, a few runs in him, you know, if he had made a few series and played some playoff basketball, maybe I'd give him the edge. But, you know, be, beating LeBron, I mean, it's it's going to be tough for any team, including Denver. If they, if they get that seven seed and play Denver, it's going to be a tough matchup. 
I'm not saying it'll go seven That's games or anything like that, but good. real will be close. Yeah, that's gonna be real tough, right? Uh, but I'm gonna roll with the year, Lakers. Yeah, I'm rolling with the Lakers. Warriors, Kings, but so the winner of this advances to the next round of the playing tournament. Who you got? It's in Sacramento. I gotta go with experience, man. I gotta go with Steph on this one. Okay. Me too. Uh, but the look. the way that the playoffs ended last year. Sacramento could have something to say, but it's just the fact that, you know, they one of the defensive players like Malik Monk, he's still out. So that could be like a that could kind of hurt them a little bit. So I'm definitely gonna roll. I'm gonna roll with uh, Golden State on that one. I'm gonna go Golden State. So that means Golden State plays the Pelicans for that eighth seed. That's gonna be uh. Who plays them for the eighth seed? The Warriors and the Pelicans play for the eighth seed. Mm, I'm gonna go with the Warriors on that. Go with the Warriors too. So that means in the playoffs for our first round series, we have the Warriors versus OKC. We have the Lakers versus Denver Nuggets. We have Man. the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Phoenix Suns, and the Clippers and the Mavericks. That might be the best series, to be honest with you, though. So, hold on. Run that 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 down for me one more time. Run that round for me one more time. So, we have who? Warriors and the Thunder. Okay. Lakers and the Nuggets. Warriors versus Thunder. Lakers, Nuggets. Uh, Timberwolves versus the Suns. Mm-hmm. And the Clippers versus the Mavs. So that's in the West. In the East, we got the Heat beating the Sixers. That's Boston versus Philly. Then we have the Knicks and the Heat. Then it's the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Indiana Pacers. And then the last match would be Orlando versus Cleveland. That's another interesting one, too. That is. That could be a seven-game series. Uh, Both those teams are pretty mediocre. So Mm, uh, That is a good matchup there. Um, so you're starting the, the No, I'm going to start in the East, Ray. This is going to shock you. All right. I'll take Pacers 4-2 and two versus the Bucks. Wow. They can't get it together, man. And uh, when is when is uh when is Giannis coming back? Is he is he back from that little injury scare he had? I believe he is. Let me look real quick. Um, the, uh, they yeah. tried to say it says calf, so he can miss game one. Oh, yeah, he can miss game one. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. Well, that's fair. That's fair. So you got the Pacers in six. So that's one game they can steal. Yeah, sure. They could possibly right. steal game one. Or they game two, the they gonna steal one at their home, and I say they can probably get two at their house, and then yeah. possibly another game. I, I'm I'm saying four and two. That's I know that's a hot take, but they don't call me hot take more for nothing. I say Pacers win four and two. Okay, all right. I had the, the Bucks. Big, you had the Bucks. I had the Bucks and. I have the Bucks in seven. Ooh. You think it's going seven? That's well, it, Giannis doubtful for game one. Mm-hmm. Say he doesn't play. I give that to Indiana and Milwaukee. Milwaukee wins game. Milwaukee wins game two. I could see them splitting in Indiana. 
Yeah. And then, you know, goes down to the last three, I think. Uh yeah, I, I think I think it could go I think it'll be back and forth. Um Indiana's playing very well. Yes, they are. TJ McConnell looks like a new player. He's got a different gear, different engine. I, I don't know what something about that role has unlocked him. I think that's yeah. something Rick Carlisle's done well for twenty years now. Right. Um but I still think, I mean, was Giannis and Dame. I mean, you're talking about in a playoff series. You just give me Giannis and Dame versus, you know, I'm taking Giannis and Dame over Indiana. Uh, the reason why I say that, too, um, people still forget about Tyrese. Tyrese is still an upcoming good player. I and, uh, it's something that Miles Turner also said, too. He's looking forward to going against Giannis. So it's like, I think, you know, Miles Turner may have something to say. And you got to remember, Siakam is looking like the Toronto Siakam. That won the championship yeah. that year. Yeah. But things could change. We all know things could change. But I'm I'm definitely gonna pick the young guns. I'm gonna pick the Pacers with this one. I have um I've liked the Pacers for about 10 years now. Just lo- I love their teams every year. I, I love the Paul George, the, the big team they had. I like the Nate McMillan teams when Miles Turner first got there. And I like Rick Carla a lot. And I like this team they have right now. I like them when they had Malcolm Brogdon, Victor Old Depot. Mm-hmm. Every year they seem to to let me down, so uh, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna expect anything from them now, but maybe I'll be surprised. I don't know. Oh, so you yeah, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the 2004 and three Pacers when uh, Miller, Jermaine, Artest, Artest had a, had a great lineup and they that couldn't is, get yeah. it done either. They couldn't, couldn't get it Jamal done. Tinsley, you know so. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from. Pacers always have a nice spot, but they just couldn't get over that hump, you know, so. Yeah, it, it, uh, they have a good team. You're right. I mean, Halbert and Siakam, McConnell, Turner, that's a good core, but I don't know. You know we'll see. I, I Pacers and six, I can see it. I, I see the vision. I hope the vision's right, brother. Orlando and Cleveland. This is a close matchup between these two teams. Cleveland have kind of slid since – um. Donovan Mitchell left. He's not been very good in his return so far. What do we think? Uh, Orlando, kind of a revelation this season. Played uh, much better than expected. Um, mm. Paolo is, uh, you know, I think sort of been a breakout star this year. I mean, people knew he was good, but to be the leader of a team, slotted right dead center in the playoffs is pretty special in a, in a, in a close sure. Eastern Conference. It's not a great Eastern Conference, but it's a tight one. I'm going to say you're absolutely right. I love what the Magic has done with this team. But even, like, not just with Pablo, too. It's like I'm proud of Jalen Suggs, too, as well. Proud of Jalen. I'm uh, proud of Jonathan Isaac. He's a, he's a great, great role player. Isaac as well. Even my man Cole Anthony, you know, um, and people who slept on him for years, Markel Folks. Everyone on this team has like really gelled together. So um, you know, you had Jet Howard too. Uh, all these guys is coming together, and can't forget the Wagner brothers. I've I've been a fan of them since you know the college days. Yep. Yeah. Um, shout out to Michigan. So I'm going to say I hate to say this, man. I'm gonna say magic, four and one. Four to one. Four and one. Cavs can't get it. I don't think the Cavs can get it together. So I'm gonna say magic four and one. I, I got the magic five games. They Cleveland can still one. And like you said, Donovan Mitchell has just not been the same since his return. And it seems like him and Garland are always questionable for a game. So it's like, can they stay healthy? And then when they're on the court, they play lousy together. So. I don't know. I, I definitely have magic taken at a five. Pause. So I have the magic in seven. I think exiting this series, Cleveland looks to deal either Garland or Mitchell. I think, uh, like you said just now, uh, poignantly, they something something missing there in terms of a lot of wing talent, a lot of guard talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have some bigs, but they they need a little bit more. Um, they need a little bit more defense in the wing. They yeah. need a little, a little bit of something else to get over that hump. Um, I think. And, you, and I want to, I want to say, you, you said Cleveland has some bigs. Can't, you can't, you can't forget 
Now, like you said, Pablo, I feel like him and Evan will be a great matchup. And people cannot sleep on Wendell Carter. I think he could really lock Jared Allen up. I really think he can. Because people so? sleep on Wendell Carter. Like, he has good defense. I think he could lock up Jared Allen. Just my opinion. You know, um, the Magic executive, Jeff Weltman, as an advisor, John Hammond, is the guy that drafted Giannis. Mm -hmm. This dude believes pretty much his whole MO is size and length, lateral movement, guys who can just play defense. Great defense. They have they have drafted a team of guys who can just play defense, who cover the floor, who close out. Mm -hmm. I like I, I I'll give it to you. I like their uh, Wendell Carter is a great example. Jonathan Isaac. They just this is a team that's made for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Guys who can defend. Um, I don't know. You know. Unfortunately, this is also a stars league, and I don't think they have a star of that caliber who can take them deep in the playoffs. But I mean, they're they're good. They they have a lot of good uh, a lot of good perimeter defense. So, but here's um, the thing: in this situation, uh, Ray, you won't even need a star because they all good role players. This yeah, is going to yeah. be one of the first role players team that could probably take you maybe to the not. I'm not saying Eastern Conference Finals, but they'll take you to the next round. That, yeah, they're, 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 they're good to get back. This is a good matchup for them in terms of looking towards the future. Yeah. Getting that playoff experience, this is a good matchup for them. Right. I agree. So, um, Knicks versus Heat. Now, he, this is the thing. See, I'm a Celtics fan. You're a Knicks fan. Mm -hmm. Bias comes in here, and, and we got to give it to Philly and Miami. These are both two really good teams that yeah. should not be this low in the standings. If it weren't for Embiid getting hurt, and if it weren't for Miami keeping their foot off the gas all season long, yeah. these teams would be higher in these standings. Exactly. I agree. Um, we all know, like I said, when Embiid went down, of course we know. But the team held it up. I, I give it to that. The team did good. He, I'm not quite sure. I really thought with them getting Rozier and them gelling together, they would probably be the top four. But I was wrong. They took their foot off the gas. Yeah. I feel like since Robinson has come back in the Knicks lineup, him and Bam could be a good matchup, but I think Bam is more athletic. I'll give you that. I don't, nobody has an answer for Jimmy Butler, but then again, like you said earlier in the show, Brunson is a terrific um, scorer. And then OJ, o, number, Anna Bonobli has great defense as well. Yeah. Josh yeah, Hart is all been, over. They've and, been almost unbeatable with Ananobi playing. I mean, he's played what like twenty games, and they're I think they've won seventeen of them. He he is a difference maker for that team. So since it's fifty fifty, Ray, and um, I am a Heat fan. I love I love Jimmy Butler. Um, I'm going to say this series could go seven, but I'm not going to pick a winner. You know, if I had to, a bias would be New York, of course. But I say I'm you, Ray. Nixon seven. Knicks and seven. Knicks and seven. I, I got to go with the home court. So, Knicks and seven. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> I would love to see Jalen Brunson survive in advance. Unfortunately, that Heat team has proven time and time and time again. They are mercenaries in the playoffs. These guys play at a different level, I think. And this is a small adjustment, I think, but I think it's going to be a big one. All season long, Bama Adebayo has sagged off on those pick and rolls. He doesn't switch anymore. He goes right to the rim. But let, me, I, also, let me also tell you, I don't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. You said they're merciful in the playoffs, right? Yeah. So is this coming off last year in the playoffs when they took out the top seeds? 2020 and 2020, I have both years. But there was key injuries to those teams that they took out. And I know hey, people hate to bring that up. I mean, I get that. I mean, like I said, I just like, hey. Remember. hey they, I mean, hey, they beat Boston. Did they really beat Boston, or did Boston just really run out of gas? 
I don't think so. I don't I don't I don't believe in that playoffs. Uh, you know, uh, these guys are the best athletes in the world. Uh, there's no such thing as running. It's an excuse. I think uh, every team's out of gas. Every team's tired. They've been playing. You know, if you go deep in the playoffs, it's 100 games. So you don't think that Tatum injury was had a big part in the game seven? No, no. I, I think I think it it comes down to. L- listen, I I think this is maybe a philosophical thing. I I just think. Their makes, their breaks, things mm-hmm. happen. That's why you play the game. You know, you can't. There's no, you know, you teams get injured. That, that happens. True, true. So that's that's the game. It's the name of the game. Uh, if it was about looking at the roster and saying, well, that team is a better team than when they wouldn't play the game. Right. So. Um, and you could say, you know, the Heat's have some injuries this year. That's maybe that's why they're not higher in the standings. I, you know. Yeah. They that, do. You know, that argument is cyclical, but I think. Um, you know, they have perimeter shooting. They have elite perimeter defense, great mm-hmm. interior defense. They have guys who can switch on everything. You have a star in Jimmy Butler who every season in the playoffs comes alive. We, you know, go through the season, we talk about, oh, you know, 10 so best players. Yeah. Jimmy Butler. Playoff, is, playoff is, Jimmy. Playoff yeah. Jimmy's different, you know. He I, love, I love Jason Tatum, but are you telling me Jason Tatum's a better player than playoff Jimmy Butler? Mm. I don't know. Jimmy Butler's pretty damn good in the playoffs. He is. Um, I want him to beat the Knicks. That's all. Is Jimmy Butler better in the playoffs than Jalen Brunson has been? There's an mm-hmm. argument there. Jalen Brunson has been damn good. Right. And we yeah. can take it back to the Dallas days, too. It, it take it back to the Dallas days. But this season in particular, Brunson's playing. There's a – he has added things to his game to counter the defenses. The defense is given to him. I just don't think this is a good matchup for the Heat. I think you're playing – a lot of perimeter players versus a lot of perimeter players. Mm-hmm. And I like the Heat's chances more. But I, I think it's going to be a seven-game series. And you got the Heat in seven games? Got the Heat in seven games. Okay. I think um, – Yeah, you know that it also could be that maybe the Heat just aren't the same team anymore and they lose. That's not – that's a chance. But uh, I would be willing to bet that they're going to step it up. Especially, you know, the reason I don't like to play in – is because these teams in the play-in, now they have a little something going into the playoffs. Right. They have a little bit, um, a little bit more time to practice some of the things that they've been saving for the playoffs. A little more momentum. And I think it, I think it, it's fueled the Heat success last season. So they go in the play, they go in the play-in, and they get a little bit more practice, a little a little bit more time to play. Right. And I think having Miles, when you are playing, is better than sitting. I agree. So. I don't like to play in either. It's just what happened to the first eight, and now you got to play a nine and ten, get a chance to get in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Where did that come, did that come from? So, I don't know. NBA's changed. But, okay. So, we, we both, but at least we both agree that it could go seven. Yeah, I think it's going to go seven games. Oh. So at least Boston and the Sixers. That's tough. That's tough. Is it? Is it tough? Yeah, I think so. I've re- here's the thing. Like you said, they've been on a how many game streak since Embiid been back? I think seven. Well, not just since Embiid's been back. I just think that they've just been on a seven game win streak. Maybe that's maybe that is the same thing. I don't know, but yeah. Do you feel? You, you you mentioned earlier. Who did you say? I think you said about Embiid. Who do you feel on your squad has an answer for Embiid? Al Horford's played great defense on him for seven years now. I I think I forgot, uh, about, I'm not, I'm I forgot gonna, about Al Horford. I keep forgetting about him. I'm not saying you're going to stop Embiid, but I think. You know, listen, if you can eliminate his effectiveness, if you can have someone who diminishes his gravity a little bit, who you maybe he's less of a decoy, mm-hmm. maybe a little less effective in the paint, maybe they rely on him a little too much in the paint. I think that's good. I think all those things are good. And I, I think, you know, this Boston team has so much firepower on the perimeter. And with poor zings. That's tough. I mean, it's tough. You, you know, Embiid can average 35, but I don't think that's going to be enough. But the rest of the I team think, will have to step up. 
it's going to have to be a team. And I'm, I don't think Orlando can, can get the job done, but it's going to be a team like Orlando or like Miami who plays really great defense on the perimeter, who doesn't need to switch everything, who can play man through the pick and roll and who can – Cover their assignment. I don't think I don't think Philadelphia has that. I don't think they they have a defense to do it. I think it goes six games, and I, that's because I I believe in Maxi and Embiid a lot, but I don't think it's going to be any more than that. Boston in five. Five. Okay. I don't think Philly can last six or seven games with Boston. And like I said, and be like you made it because you made a good solid point that made me change my mind. Embiid is that type of player who reminds me of LeBron back in the finals of 2017, where he could score 50 a game but still not get it done. And still lose five, four to five games. Yeah, and I don't think that team really has what it takes to step up. So I'm not really sure. And then injuries is killing Philly right now. And I and let's be honest, the way Boston is built, they're not they're not no first round exit teams. No. Mm. This is definitely the best Boston team that they've had since, and they've had a lot of great teams. I'm, I mean, I, you know, don't get yeah. me wrong, they've had a lot of good teams, but the, this right. is the best team since the, the probably 2010. I agree. And, I, agree. And I could argue this team is better than the 2010 team. I mean, um, they are they are well put together. Now, you know, I guess as the playoffs progress, and maybe if we do another podcast, I don't think that I still don't think that they're going to win the championship because I think Denver's. They're better than the 2010 Boston Celtics. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, they had you got. I mean, Jalen yeah. Brown and Jason Tatum are both guys who can average above 25 a game. <laughs> Derek White's a perfect utility player at the guard <laughs> position. Um, Al Horford's a great interior defensive player. He's he can stretch the floor. I mean, this team is solid. Drew Hall. I haven't even talked about Drew Holiday yet. He's one of the best defensive wings of all time who's a great leader who's a solid player in the playoffs i mean we're talking about a squad i mean you know this is it this team reminds me a lot of um i mean i'm just, i'm not i mean i it reminds me a lot of the pistons in 04 reminds which, me a lot now, they don't have which, a benoit but which takes have, me to I don't mean to cut you off, like I said, which takes me, Big Baby Davis. You had Marquise Daniels. You had Nate Robinson, who was a, still an elite defensive player. People don't yeah. notice that. Ray Allen, KG, Paul Pierce. He, this, the big three was still there, Rajon. So I disagree with that being better. Did these boys being better than the 2010? Is Tatum right now better than Pierce was then? Is Tatum better than Pierce? Right, no, right. I mean, two, 2010 Pierce to now, is Tatum today. Is Tatum better? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Jalen Brown versus Ray Allen in 2010. Oh, well, Ray Allen, man. In 2010? It's a clutch. He was that clutch shooter, man. I don't care what nobody say. Not just the Heat. He was clutch yeah, in Boston. He yeah, was. but you got to keep up. You got to be able to keep up in the games. But what he you telling me he wasn't keeping up in games? Ray Allen wasn't keeping up in games. Is that what you're telling me? I mean, they had a, that was a tight playoff run. I mean, it, it, or, you know, that it was a six game series against the Magic, seven games against the Lakers. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm not. Well, I'm not saying he wasn't. I mean, as a team. I mean, is it? Yeah, is I was it, gonna say. I I feel like he. I'm sorry. I, even though he was. I, like almost out of his prime, he wasn't the Supersonics Ray Allen. We all no, know that. No, but he progressed his time to. If this makes any sense, I'm gonna just have break down. He made it to a point where, damn, that Boston Ray Allen was something different. If that makes any sense, because we all know, of course, he was Mister Wet, 
pause in the Seattle Supersonic Days. We know that. Yeah. But now we can be like, damn, that Boston, that Celtics, Ray Allen was something different. But well, even also, the Miami <laughs> Heat, Ray Allen, all he really, the shot. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll settle for this. If, if there's a conversation to be had, at least, between this team and the 2010 Celtics, I'm happy because that means they're, you know, they, they have the chance to, to compete in the finals. Yeah, because the only thing is this. They won the finals. That's the only difference you can really say is that they won the finals versus this roster. Now, they lost. Oh, no, yeah, I'm sorry. 2018, 20, 2008, y'all. But as far as that, no. Oh, yeah, no, no. They're not, they're not as good as the 2008 Celtics, but. Yeah, the 2010, I, like you say, y'all made it to the finals. This, yeah. I think y'all have a, a few kryptonites, but I'm, I'm not going to say who, but I feel like you have a few things that could be in your way. And I honestly feel Prisingis could be y'all downfall. He gets in his own way all the time. Not just from New York, from Dallas as well. Every single team he's been on, he's, been a, he's always been in his own way. I think there's a gear there that they have not properly – used yet and that's having him be the ball handler in the pick and roll yeah he is um he's a mismatched nightmare because he's a good passer right if he's handling that rock in a in a, in a, in a inverse pick and roll mm -hmm. he's got the spatial awareness where he's going to be able to find guys um i think purposefully joe mazula has not used him well in the last month like in those hawks games where he was put in the pick and roll a lot, and I don't think they would. Uh, they were switching him in the pick and roll against Dejounte Murray. Right, Murray was kicking his ass, and I don't. I just don't think that's something they would do in the playoffs. I don't think. Um, I think they were. I don't want to say this so callously, but I think they were playing around at the end of the season. I, I don't think they've. I think they were playing with things, seeing how they can adjust things, seeing if things will work, seeing if things mm -hmm. don't work. Um, but I think. He can really be a facilitator for that team uh, in instances and unlock a new gear to that offense because they have so much shooting. But we'll see. I mean, Philadelphia is a – you know, assuming Philadelphia gets that eighth seed or Miami, those are two great matchups to really test themselves yeah. in the first round. There's, that could be a whole different scenario because we only go on by who we think. Of. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Let me ask and, you something, Ray. If Celtics lose, what are you doing? Me? Yeah. Is it time and, to break it up? Oh, 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 as a oh, as a general manager. Um well I mean they just they had Drew Holiday sign that extension, presumably so they can keep um Derek White, I guess. Yeah. Um I think let me look up something real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take it time. Oh, okay. Look up Porzingis' contract. I will be the first to admit I'm not very savvy with contracts. Yeah. I think uh, it's sort of silly for me to pretend like I'm a NBA agent, like I'm going to remember this stuff. <laughs> uh, let's do this. So he, yeah, so he's up for a contract. So in all reality, they won't be able to keep Porzingis, I guess, but they've taken the steps to re-sign Derek White, I, I guess. Um, I think, and I think this is the biggest criticism of the Celtics you can, you can say, is that every year, pretty much for the last seven years, this team has looked different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, you know, they have the Isaiah Thomas team. Next season, they have Gordon Hayward and Kyrie. Gordon Hayward's out. Then the last half of the season, Kyrie is out. He doesn't play the playoffs, really. Next season, Kyrie's there. The season after that, he's not. They had the team with Malcolm Brogdon last year. Now you have 
and Derek White was there for half of the year. And then now you have Porzingis, Drew Holiday. This team always looks different. Yeah. And I think when you think of most great teams in, in really in the NBA history that were built organically, that were built through drafts, usually those teams build together. Usually they there's yeah. some element of the core that's there for a while. Showtime, Kareem and Jamal Wilk were there for at least two years before Magic got there. Mm-hmm. The Detroit Pistons, it took years for that team to get over the hump. The Bulls, it took years for that core to get over the hump. The Warriors, it took a few years for that team to get over the hump. And moving Draymond in the starting lineup helped them, but he was still there. It's hard to take, just say Tatum and Brown, you're going to be working with different guys every year and you're going to build the chemistry you need in the season. Al Horford's there, then he's gone, then he's back, right? I mean, it's like you have these teams and the continuity's not there. So uh, to answer your question, sorry for the long story, but I think think you keep it together and you have them build upon this year. Mm. Now, you know, if Tatum doesn't play well, and you know that inevitably he's going to seek out a max contract, and you're going to have to lock him into a three hundred plus million dollar deal. Mm-hmm. Well, that I mean, I think then you have to start asking questions. But I don't foresee that happening. That he's going to play that badly. Um, I think you give it another run, and maybe Porzingis isn't there. Maybe, but Derek White, Drew Holiday, Brown, Tatum, and Orford, and some other manner of a big man. That's still a core that that, that can give you a championship. Uh, you know, you just – these things take time. You, you can't, you know – I mean, the Lakers, were, you know, with Shaq and Kobe, that team had years, mm-hmm. like we talked about, years of going to the playoffs and losing, but they were still together. All it, all it took was really a coach. Um, I think maybe you look at maybe Joe Mazzul is not the guy, maybe. I think that maybe there was a conversation there. Maybe, you you know, they probably shouldn't have let Ime Udoka go. I think, you know, but we'll see. Do you think that um so what what scenario do you think the Celtics will end up in? Like what playoff scenario will they end up in? Finals. Well, maybe they're going to the, I think they're going to the championship game. I, I think you know they play the best in the West. Um I think anything less than the finals in this Eastern Conference is is a failure. Yeah. I mean, Milwaukee, you know, my my pick at the all-star break. On all grind, the podcast was the Bucks. Yeah, they have completely failed to find any traction. They're just not a good team. Um, and I think it's obvious Damian Lillard doesn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the only thing that's going to change that is if they win a title, and I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Philly or Miami have what it takes to beat them this year. I don't think the Knicks or the Pacers have what it takes. I think, I mean, in all honesty, the East is sort of a weak conference. Yes, I agree. Um, You know, I'm not saying they need to win the championship to consider the season a success, but, you know. Because that would be more two finals in almost, what, three, three, two years, three years? Three years, two finals in three years, yeah. (laughs) Yep. And that'll be this is that'll be um what the fifth conference finals for Jason Tatum. I mean, you know, he's you know, he's still shockingly young because he got in the league so early, you know. I mean yeah. he's, he's twenty-four. Mm-hmm. Um that's gonna be rough. That's gonna be rough to deal with if they can't get over the hump and win the finals. You know, he's 25. I think that's about the year that Jordan and LeBron won. Um, maybe Kareem was a year younger. You Where know? do you so, put Tatum I mean, if he do win the finals? I'm sorry? Where do you put Tatum where he, when he do win the finals? Where do you put him at? Is he the new face of the NBA? Because he has a strong argument. He Listen, he, he, he might have something to say, like you said earlier. In the year after the All Star break, I believe, if I win the finals, you know, I'm gonna be talked about. I think, I think, um, 
that's such an interesting conversation because I think it's it's a little more nuanced than people talk. People uh, imagine it is because it's a global game now. Mm -hmm. I can say in the face, yeah, he might be the face of American basketball post LeBron. But I mean, Giannis and Jokic are champions and MVP winners. The yeah. problem is that in America, it's going to be hard for them because they're not American, right? Yeah. Internationally, now are they the face of basketball? Yeah, there's an argument for sure. Um, I don't think the face of the NBA will ever be unless there is one unifyingly dominant American player, like a LeBron James or Michael Jordan, which is going to be hard. Because there's so much parity in this league. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, bro. It's it you know it's right now it's hard for me to imagine there's a team that's going to rattle off three or four titles in the next ten years. It's hard for me, other than the, other than the Nuggets, it's hard for me to, to believe that. So, I think I don't think there's ever going to be a, or at least for the next twenty years, probably going to be a single face of the league because so many different teams win. There's so many different players from other countries that are amazing. You know, yeah. You know, I think I think Luka Doncic is destined to win the finals one day. He's he's going to win the championship one day. Will he be the face of the league? Probably not because he's not American. You know, it's 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 harder for international players, but then their success detracts from the American players. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, um, I don't think I I think that model is gone. I guess long story short, I think you know that the LeBron James is it's going to be difficult. I think you know Webb and Yama, he's going to inevitably win a championship, and he's French. I mean, you know. Right. It's hard for Americans to to enjoy these players like we would a Michael Jordan or a LeBron or not. We don't even really enjoy LeBron. A lot of people don't like him at all, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot to be talked about. But... It is. I mean, I, I definitely think it'll put him in a different conversation. He'll be seen in Most a different definitely. I agree. I, I feel like, you know, he'll have something to say if he wins the championship. Do I hope they win? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> do I hope? No, I don't. But hey, if you do, you know, I'm not a hater. Congrats, you know. But Tatum will have something to say, a lot to say. So let's go to the West. Um, yes. Not going to lie, there's a lot of bias in this West one. So I'm going to let you start it off. Well, the first seed, OKC, would play the Warriors. In our playing projection, so uh, I mean, I, I'll just I guess okay. I've okay seen six. Mm, really, I think um, um, I like Jalen a lot. I think this is a guy who's poised to. He's young. I think he's got he's got another gear to his game. And playing with SGA, I'm not gonna say it limits it, but I think he's gonna thrive against that Warriors, the Warriors core of wings. He's gonna have a good series. I think SGA can give everything Steph can give him in return. I think he could easily average 30 in this series. He and Curry can go back and have a classic playoff performance against each other. I'm not so sure about that that matchup between Draymond and Chet. Is it gonna is it gonna really favor Draymond? He's a lot taller than Draymond, and does things rather unconventionally. Likes to play on the perimeter, stretches the floor. He's eliminating Draymond from that that interior, eliminating a lot of his effectiveness. Yeah, his ability to switch, his his awareness of uh of take of you know people driving to the basket. It's gonna be tough. Um. And I think it's, you know, playing at home, having home court advantage favors him a lot. Okay, so he's a good crowd. It's a good city that cares a lot about their basketball team. Um, so, yeah, I would take OKC in six. I mean, what about you? Well, it's a 50-50 with me. I'm not going to say 50-50, more 60-40. It feels like every time I doubt the Warriors, they always find some way to win. But I like OKC in five because – I feel like the opposite of what you said. 
Chet will be that mismatch nightmare. And nobody on OKC, I mean, nobody on Golden State will be able to. I think Chet will have a great playoff series. I feel both Jalen Williams will have a great playoff series as well. Draymond can't keep up with none of them. Yeah. Um, Steph, like you said, Steph and, and Shy can go at it. Cool. Um, it's just, I feel like they're young and they will like really out duel the Golden State Warriors. But like I said, every time I feel like I doubt the Warriors, they find some way to win. But I'm going to take OKC in five. Because like well, I said, and, I, and to add to your point, I I'm a huge Steph Curry fan. I have been since 2013. Yeah. Uh, I I love. I just love how. I mean, I, I can't lie. I love how he plays. I love. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not. You know, I love it. So I wouldn't be mad if they won. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to see them advance, but. I think OKC is going to take care of them. You said the five, I think it's six. Yeah. Um, but it's a good young team. I, I want to see some new blood, you know. I, I want to see, too. you know, especially the team they have with both Jalen Williams, Shet, Shy, Aaron Wiggins. I, I want to see them grow. I do feel like they can be a coach away. I'm not quite sure about him just yet. But I feel like with these young teams that's in the top three with um, Wolves, and Thunder, I've said it in one of my other episodes I did with my cousin. I feel like they are a coach away. They have the talent. They have the talent, but I just feel like they're a coach away. But I do take them in five. Lakers in the Nuggets. Last year, this Lakers team was swept. 4-0. Mm. Oh, you go first now. Well, I got Denver in five. Denver in five? You giving the Lakers one win? I think they might win one at home. I think – I mean, honestly, and, uh, and uh, you know, having AD, having him attack Jokic is is a benefit and that it might, might fatigue him a little bit if they can get that matchup. But I think – I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to hide my – you can call it – my. in my opinion, Nikola Jokic is the most valuable player in basketball. He's the best player in basketball. Mm -hmm. He's the most unstoppable player in basketball. No one makes his teammates better than Nikola Jokic. So, I, you know, I'm going to – I'm going to – I think LeBron has a lot left in him in the playoffs, but I don't think it's enough to beat that Nuggets team. Yeah, I think – No See, offense to the Lakers fans. It's just, you know, it's a, it, it's a bad position to be in, but well, there's one word you're forgetting. Faith. I have faith in the Lakers. <laughs> Lakers and six. I'm sorry, man. Lakers and six. Lakers and six. I think they will get over this hump. And um, I believe I want to believe that AD will put up a fight against Jokic. I'm not saying he'll win. But enough to, you know, distract other players on Denver, you know, so they'll have to do something to step up. We'll say Lakers is six. Okay. I you know, in I this know series, wishful, wishful thinking, but it's you know, I'm about to say Lakers. I'm looking for Jamal Murray to have a big series. Yes. Big series for him. I don't think I mean Reeves is you know, he's okay. Yeah. You know. But yeah. Jamal, I mean that that print, you know, they're guards, not very good on defense. Jamal Murray, I, I think he's we're talking maybe 27 points a game in this series. Mm, that's that's a good yeah. You know, Jamal Murray, talk about Cal Parry leaving Kentucky. Maybe arguably best legacy of any of those Kentucky guys, Jamal Murray. Uh, not talked about often in Cal Parry's list of great Kentucky players. Mm. Mal Murray, the, uh, sneaky good resume, this guy. Yeah, I agree. I think I think uh, it, it'd be big for him as a as a brand, as an individual player. I think he's gonna have a big series against these Lakers. Remind everyone how good he is in the playoffs because he is he is clutch. That's he's a big, big game, big scorer. So, um, we move on. Minnesota versus. Wait, hold, on, hold on one second. Understand that, but you're forgetting another Kentucky player on the other side. 
Eddie. Eddie gonna be in foul trouble. What what big man do they have is gonna be able to contain Jokic other than AD, and I think the problem there is is that you're losing AD in other ways if you're having a focus on Jokic. Hey, uh, it's just, just wishful thinking, right? I just wishful thinking. Well, okay, thinking. all right. I just like I said, that's that's like I told you before. It's just the Laker fan in me. That if the Lakers win this series, I'm hiding until next year. I want you to know that. No, you ain't gonna be oh, no, nobody. Yes, I will. I will. I hunt you down. <laughs> I'm going to hunt you down, brother. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know. So who we got next, bro? Minnesota versus the Phoenix Suns. That's a sleeper series right there. That can go the either way. Towns has played like garbage since he's returned. He looks yes, bad. Yes, he has. Which he you has. Know, like detrimental, like bad. Like, uh, and Nurkic is, Nurkic is back too, right? Because Nurkic was hurt for a while. Yeah, I mean. And he, when did he play last? He didn't do so good against Minnesota Sunday, though. You know, he had a few rests. Well, he only played 20 minutes, excuse me. 20 minutes, six points, five rebounds. But he had a double-double against Sacramento. He played the full 31 minutes. Yeah. Nurkic is going to be a nightmare for Cat. No answer for KD. Or what about Gobert? You think he's going to be bad for Gobert? I don't think Gobert can really keep up in the seven game series against no. Mm -mm. Really? No, I don't think so. I have no faith in Gobert at all. And yes, that's a personal bias. I hate Gobert. He started the COVID shit. I blame him. Yes, I do for licking the microphone. So I'll forever hate Gobert for shutting the NBA down. But it's also going to come to experience too, right? I feel like Kevin Durant will definitely lead this team to the next league. I feel like they'll get a win. I'm going to pick the Suns in six. Minnesota's still a good team. I just think they'll sneak two wins. But I think it's going to come to experience with KD. Because he wants to be in that greatest conversation. I'm going to say Suns think... six. Yeah, I mean, it, they definitely have the experience factor. Yeah. I just think Minnesota has been in the playoffs a few years now. Mm -hmm. um, playoffs playing well. Um, I think Anthony Edwards comes out and has a statement performance against this, uh, the Suns team. Uh, I'm going to take the Wolves in six. And the reason why I don't – I like Ant-Man, I really do. But it's going to be like an Embiid situation, like you said earlier in the show. Ant can score 40, but who's going to back him up? It won't be enough to win against the Suns. That's just how I feel. I, I mean, it's tough, eh? Hey. Wolves and six. Hey, Wolves and six. What about you? Suns and what? I say Suns and six. The Wolves can steal two games. I feel like they can steal two games. And one of them will be a road game. They'll steal. Uh, it's tough. I mean, I I wonder. You know, I like. I think they have just. Yeah, I think they have just enough scoring. Mike Conley, Nas Reed, Alexander Walker. I think um, – and I know Gobert is limited in the playoffs offensively, but defensively, you know, he's he is a force down low. Mm -hmm. He does limit those takes to the basket. I think – I see I, – I understand where you're coming from, though. I mean, it's hard to bet against Kevin Durant for sure, yeah. but – I think Ant's gonna come out and have a statement performance, and um, take whatever he can get from Cat and go with it. So that's a that's a that's fair. But uh, but I don't know. Maybe I'm believing too much in it. We'll see. We'll see what happens.
This is, I think, the best series of this first round. Clippers versus Mavericks. Taking my boys, Clippers, in seven. Clippers in seven. Yes. Um. Don't get me wrong. Oh, Luca. Can Kyrie and Luca really have the fuel power? to really win against a Paul George, Kawhi, James, and Russell. It'll be a great dog fight, don't get me wrong. But that game seven was what's gonna really happen here. And it might not even be seven games, right? For real. Who on them, it's just them two on the Dallas. I don't really have faith in nobody else on Dallas for it. But I'm interested to see who you have. Well, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's not like P.J. Washington's a blossoming star in this league or something like that. I mean, they do. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying there, but. Um, I think, well, I'll put it this way. How many years ago did they played the Clippers in the, in the playoffs? The past few years, right? Didn't they play last year? No, no, no. Mavs didn't make it last year. 21. 21, they played the Clippers in a seven-game series. Mm -hmm. They lost. Now, it was a different Mavericks team, different Clippers team. Clippers. Mm -hmm. Although the Clippers, you know, I mean, I think – this is really what they should have looked like the whole time. It's just been for injuries that they have not, you know. Yeah. This is the this is where about this team should have been since Kawhi left Toronto. I think I got. I'm going to give it to Luca and Kyrie. I think. I think they're going to give Kawhi the business. Really, Paul George. I think so. Uh, How many games you got? Seven games. I think it's going to I think, uh, you know, the year that they, the year that they went seven, they had Chris Stops. So they definitely had more interior, you know, a bigger presence. But I think Kyrie right now and Luca, man, they look, they look invincible. Those two guys together, I mean, they're averaging like, 55 a game together, 57 or something like that. They're going to need them. more. They're going to need more to, to beat them. Clippers. Yeah, but I think both those guys can average damn near 30 a game. Seriously. They can. They can. But what about I, I the rest of them? Kyrie Irving's proven in the past with LeBron that two guys can take a team. You know, just in playoff basketball, things slow down, and if you can score like that in isolation, and here and there get the guys – uh, get the, the shooters involved. I think you can win a playoff series. Um, and I also think, listen, I don't I don't mean to be grim, mm -hmm. but we're also thinking, is Kawhi Leonard going to stay healthy this whole series? I was just thinking the same about Kyrie. Can Kyrie yeah. stay healthy? Because these are, these are injury-prone players we talk about. These are injury-prone. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. This is true. Uh, that's that's, that's a, the million-dollar question. Can Kawhi stay healthy? Can Paul George stay healthy? Can Russ stay healthy? Hell, we all know how James Harden is in the playoffs, too. But I did pick these guys to go far. Hell, they could go to the Eastern Conference Finals if everyone stays healthy and consistent the whole playoffs and not just show up one game and then lose by something the next few games. They you know, could. Everyone, it has to be consistent all around. They could. This Clippers team could go to the Finals. Uh, they could go to the Western Conference Finals. They could play Denver, maybe even go further. But um, I think um, – I feel like it could be a battle of LA in the Eastern in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, you know, just think, just an think, opinion, yeah. just an opinion. You know, just thinking, just thinking out loud. Well, I wonder. So, what's the regular season series look like? You said who? Clippers and Mavericks. I wonder who's okay. Clippers. 
Clippers won two of the three games. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay with my pick. I'm not gonna backtrack it, but I I, yeah, I think it's gonna go seven games. I think. Yeah, I think it can go seven too. I honestly think it can go seven. So of the West, of the East, who do you think is going to the finals? Just looking at um, the way things look so far. I have a few scenarios of the finals. I feel like it can be Nuggets versus Boston. Okay, I agree with that. Um, my dream final, Lakers versus Knicks. To where I'm just one happy person. I don't care who wins or lose. Um, also, a sleeper final. No, I'm going to just leave it at that. I'm going to just leave it at okay. those two. What about you? Nuggets and Celtics for me is I think that's Nuggets and Celtics. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, how often do the two top seeded teams go to the finals? I mean, it's mm -hmm. not that often, you know, but, yeah. Uh, but I think both these teams are actually head and shoulders above the others in the conference, so um. Now that said, you know, in the last five years, no team has repeated. So, you know, do I, I mean, if the Nuggets really, if the Nuggets do win another championship in a row, that's a special way to repeat because we go five years without a single team winning twice. Is, that's, that's rare in the NBA. It doesn't happen often. You know, Raptors, Lakers, Bucks, Warriors, Nuggets. It's five different teams in five years. It's that's rare. So, um, I think it's gonna be Nuggets and Celtics. I, I think I have the Nuggets repeating. Obviously, God, I hope not. You know, I'd like to see the Celtics win one again, but mm, that's gonna but, be uh, the Nuggets, man. I mean, well, I guess this this uh, this is a good segue into the next topic: the MVP or the the award voting. Yeah, who do you so who do you feel? First and foremost, right? You you're a great basketball analyst. I feel like you can be on TV. I feel like you should be on TV calling NBA games. Thank you, man. Describe what an MVP is to you in your words. What do you feel like an MVP is? Well, the cynic in me says it's the best. It's the best storyline. Mm-hmm. It's the, it's not the not the best storyline in terms of the quality of the story, but the I think it kind of fits the narrative of the year. And it, it really I know this isn't not really an answer, this is sort of a cop out, but I think I think it all depends on the year, you know. Mm -hmm. Um I think I think it depends on the circumstances of last year. It all it, it's sort of um but it is a narrative based thing. It's not something that you look at and you say, uh There's no formula for it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I mean, people say, oh, it's the most valuable player. Mm -hmm. But that's not that's not fair to players like LeBron James, who probably should have won the award six or seven times mm -hmm. and didn't because there was another storyline going on in the league that is more captivating, let's say. Yeah. I look at Russell Westbrook's triple double season. Uh, that's a great example where, yeah. you know, they were like the fourth seed or the fifth seed that year in the Western Conference. Typically, that would be exclude you because you need to be one of the top two teams, maybe top three. Maybe you'd be top three team if, if the top three are close. Um, you really agree with that? Like, you think they should be the top three teams? That, like, a, a player from that should have, like, let's say if the magic was – a top three team. But those are a bunch of role players. You really think, like, you you know, hey, we did this as a team. You didn't really do this as one person. Well, I mean, but then you have the other, you know, let's say the Magic were three in Boston. New York was ahead of them. Mm -hmm. right? 
Orlando, and then in the West you have OKC, Denver, and Minnesota, right? Yeah. I mean, no, I don't think I don't think Palo Bancaro should be in the conversation. But you still have Brunson, Tatum, Shea, Jokic, and Edwards in the conversation. I also think that, you know, we do they, you know, the voters do a top five in MVP voting. That's a little silly. You know, are there five guys who should be the MVP this season? No, it's it's between three guys pretty much every year. But you know, to have a top five is I understand it helps the voting, the counts and everything, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, the conversation this year, Boston's out of the equation because too many guys on that team score 20 points. Right. They're, they're scratched. I think had Brunson been doing it a little earlier in the season, this had they looked like a 51 team earlier this season, Brunson would really be in the discussion. Unfortunately, I think he's, I think he's in this discussion. I think he is too, but in terms of actually, you know, really it's a two man race between Jokic and Shy right now, right? I think pretty that's, much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, I think if, if Brunson been doing this earlier, had they looked like a second seed earlier, I think he would really be in the conversation. Um, to me, MVP is – it's not always the best guy on the best team. It's not always the most valuable player. I think really it's sort of a – Storyline. Storyline thing, and that's a symptom of it being reported on – of it being voted on by reporters. So you know, best storyline. That's pretty much it, right? Pretty much. Best story so the reason why I say Brunson, I say Shy, and I say Luca, I honestly don't care where their team at. I mean, excuse me, where their team is. But let's look at the standings. People will argue and say, take Luca out because they're number five. Who cares right. about that? It's a great storyline. He has them back in the playoffs. So I can yeah, put yeah. Luca there. Shy, been playing a hell of incredible, been consistent all year. So I'm going to say Shy. And on top of that, he's in the top five in scoring. And the reason why I keep Brunson in there, he's taking the Knicks to the number two seed. He's he was a little floppy at the beginning of the season. I get that, but he's also top five. These three guys are also top five in the scoring right now. And their storyline is incredible. So that's why my MVP will be one of these three. Just honest opinion. Can't really say, can't really say, hold on, let's let's look here. I can't really say Giannis. Because of his support system. Can't really say Durant because of his support system. You can't really say, like you said, Tatum, his support system as well. So, Jokic, would you put Jokic in there? But, yeah, because Jokic had an amazing after All Star run to bring his team back to first, second place. So, you could probably throw Jokic in there too. As an MVP runner, so yeah, I would say one of them four guys. The story, because like you said, the storyline is incredible. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess just to uh, take the suspense out of it, my MVP would be Okic. I think Jokic is it, it's, and we talked about this when we did the list about. Yeah. MVP back-to-back -back winners is that if you are the MVP and your team does just as well or better, you're going to win it again. There's a precedent for that in the MVP vote. Right. So when he won it in 21, their team was third in the West mm -hmm. with 47 wins. Right? Right. Next season, they lose – Jamal Murray was out the entire season, right? The one MVP year? Yeah. So yeah, so his second year, his second year he won MVP. Jamal Murray was out the entire season. They finished sixth in the Western Conference, mm -hmm. but they won 48 games, which was one more than the previous season. So he won again because the team was just as good and they were missing Jamal Murray, right? Right. That was the argument. A lot of people thought Embiid should have won. But once again, 
supposedly the best player of uh, Julius Randle is out too. And look what Brunson's doing. And Shy is pretty much the best player on OKC, and he has his team up there. Like I said, and of course, top five in scoring. Luka is number one in scoring with 30 through three a game. And has also been consistent when Kyrie Irving, his side partner, is out too. So that's what I'm saying. These four guys definitely have an argument. Like you said, which you oh yeah, they have an oh yeah, definitely they have an argument. I, I'm not I'm not saying they don't. I think this is a very close MVP race, particularly yeah, but even MVP. even too like yeah. this year. Sorry about that, bro. Even with this year too, with Jamal Murray being hurt, yeah, Jokic definitely could be. He's been holding it down for so long. Yeah, you know, and he's been quietly. People have been quietly looking at Jokic like his numbers gonna always be there. So, I, I think the thing for him that helps him in voting this year is that the last time they won forty eight games and he won the yeah. MVP. Now they won fifty seven. They won fifty seven. So right. that's you know, I mean that nine more games than the last time he won the MVP. Second in the West, they're the defending champions. Mm -hmm. I think this is the other thing that plays into it too when you're realistically looking at the voters voting as their reporters. They picked Embiid last year. And a lot of it is because of when they award the MVP during the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Embiid wasn't even playing anymore when he won the MVP award. And Jokic is dominating. He's still in the playoffs. Right. Five for championship. So it makes it, it makes the award look a little silly. The guy that won it isn't even playing right now. Obviously, we know that it's just a regular season award, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't think – these are all things that reporters should keep in mind when they're voting on this award. Yeah. Um, I would pick Jokic. I would have Shea second. I would have Jalen Brunson third. And then it would be Doncic and Edwards. And I have Brunson third. Because what he's done is remarkable. I mean, to only have Ananobi for so many games to have lost Randall, who I think we both think that they're better without him. I agree, yes. But to have lost him and to still have a 50-win season, mm -hmm. second seed in the East, it's remarkable. Um, you know, unfortunately, Embiid's on this conversation because of injury. Um, if he was, I think he would have won this award, hands down. He would be back. Mm -hmm. back yes, of course, most definitely. But you know it. You know that it's like we said. That's why you play the game because you don't know what's going to happen. So, um, yes. I I will say this: if Brunson does this again next year, and this is storyline all season long, and they finish in the top three, I think he's going to win the MVP. I think he could. I, I hope he can. Because that Knicks team is it's good, but it's not great. It's not a great supporting cast, and he's been dominant, and. Um, has really brought the the Knicks into a, a, a greater conversation in the daily sports. Yes. Conversation. So. Mm. And you would have Doncic? You'd, he'd be your winner? No. 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 Shea? Uh, Shea or Brunson will be my top two right now. So, uh... I I'm interested to see if if I think it's going to be between Shea and Jokic. Um, I think. Yeah, it, it's uh, yeah. Every like I said, them top four have a heart. So. Yeah, yeah, and and I think I think any of these guys deserve it. Mm -hmm. I think Shea, yeah, he's the first seed. He's is his second in points per game. Is that yeah. right? Doncic. Second in points per game. Is that right? All right, your top five. Yo, uh, Luca, thirty three point nine. Yeah. Giannis is thirty point four. Wow. Clay is thirty point one. So he's third. Okay. Brunson is number four with twenty eight point seven. And there is a tie for fifth. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, 
they both tied in fifth place for this. Yeah, I think I think it's being third in points per game, being number one in the West for, for Shea, I think that's – I think in most seasons that'd be good enough for an MVP. I think in most seasons that'd be good enough. I can agree with you more. So, it's a toss-up. I mean, I think – you know, I think either of them really are deserving. Yeah. Jokic damn near averaging a triple double. I mean, that's tough. True. It's tough. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, you know, I, I think Doncic is, you know, a lot of voters are going to say, well, he's fifth in the West. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that doesn't work. That doesn't bode well for him. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think, you know, Westbrook and Jokic can do it in fifth or the sixth seed. I don't see why Doncic can't, but we'll see. I mean, I think, um, like I said, if it's, if it asks me, Shy deserves it. Consistent all year, great storyline, like you said earlier, and hasn't taken his foot off the gas and is on the mission. So Shy, yeah, yeah. like you said, the only thing that kills me with Brunson is the inconsistency at the beginning of the year. And he has turned it up a notch since the All Star break. Excuse me, a little before the All Star break. Then right. going towards after, you know, to get the number two seed in a while, that's incredible. I'm proud of him. Um, general manager of the Knicks, Reyes, Ross, whatever your name is, trade Julius Randle, please. I know you're gonna watch this. I hope you watch this. Trade Julius Randle. That's all I have to say. I think I think they will. I think, I think they will have this all season. I hope so. Um. Yeah, that's so. That's it on MVP. Anything else you want to add? No, no, not necessarily. I think um, I'm interested to see who will win. I think, I think more so than in most years, there's not more. There's more than two winners that could win this. It's, it's really is a toss up. I think there are a lot of guys in the mix. Mm -hmm. Um. Defensive Player of the Year. Do you want to go through all the awards? We can. We can. Um, who you got? Rudy Gobert. <laughs> I mean, you know, number one defense in the league. It helps. That helps his case. Um, I think there's a big, you know, I, I'm – I'm happy for Webb and Yama that there's a conversation there for him. Um, but they just, they're such a bad team. Sort of seems wrong to name him defensive player of the year. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I pick, I pick a bear. I don't know. I mean, go mm. bear. Oh, uh. I, we talked about him earlier. His athleticism is incredible. I'm going to go with my man, Bam. Bam is a great choice. Bam is a, a hell of a choice. Uh, I like the way Bam plays defense. His athleticism, I like to feel like he's a, he's a matchup nightmare. And uh, people should really not sleep on him when you enter in a game with him. Or, you know, Anthony Davis. And definitely Gobert has an argument, too. So I'm not going to definitely leave him out. But if I was to um, give me Bam, that's my man. I like Bam. Bam but I like Bam a lot. I, I, he's a yeah. good pick. I feel like Bam could definitely be a good – he should definitely be in the candidates. I hope he's in the candidates. Well, oh, I'm sure he's going to get some votes. I'm sure I sure. hope so. So um, definitely, definitely give me Bam. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Six men of the year. Oh boy. I 
I talk. wish I wish this is what I said earlier with my man Malik Monk being out. Yeah. If Malik wasn't out, I would definitely he would definitely be mine. But uh, you said some Nas Reed is definitely. I think he should probably. Yeah, I would pick him since Malik is hurt. Reed, I would definitely go Reed, man. I I gotta go Reed on that one. Yeah, I like Nas Reed. I. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I feel like if Chris Paul played more this year, it'd been Chris Paul, but you know, he was out for some, some period of time and they haven't been that great all year. Yeah. Years. Yeah. But Malik Monk is a good pick. Um, you know, I know. But it's a, it's, it's a few of them. Yeah. If Malik like, wasn't hurt, Nas is definitely a good runner up. And people may disagree with this one. Um, uh, Clippers. I feel like Norman Powell could be a good candidate. Norman Powell's great. Yeah, Norman Powell's a great pick. Um, and Bucks. Shout out to Bobby Portis. Bobby He's Portis. Yeah, yeah. Bobby, Bobby Portis. Portis. So uh, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised with Bobby Portis because he's, you know, champion, a pretty well known player. But yeah. I, personally, I go nuts for you. Uh, Malik Monk can stay healthy. I'd pick Malik Monk. Most so likely. Good choice too. But. That's what I'm saying. That because it hurts then. King's team when he's not playing. Yeah, yeah. Um, rookie of the year. Yeah. It's pretty easy. Victor. But I do want to talk to you about just look at the, his end of the year stat line. Mm -hmm. Um, it's twenty point one something like that. It's, it's crazy. I mean, this this. This kid is just. But hold on. No way. No way. Let me take Victor out. No, no, because Victor leading the league of blocks, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I want to talk about these other young cats, man. You got Scoot's been doing okay. Then you got, you know, Keontae George from the Jazz, who's been holding down when them other bums is out. Yeah. You know, Brandon Miller's been trying his best, even though Charlotte's not really a good watchable yeah. team. My man Shet, y'all know how I feel about Shet on OKC. Um even Jamie from on um, the Heat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hawkes, yeah. Oh, um, man. It's just a lot of young I don't know. It, you could pick between them two, but I they're gonna give me to Victor. There, I think most years this would be a good rookie of the year race. I just think, unfortunately, this kid is just different. Victor, yeah, he's just different. I mean, it. I, uh, I mean, this this stat line is, you know, and I think I want to talk about this specifically because um, it's exciting. It's exciting to see twenty one point four points, ten point six rebounds, three point nine assists, one point two steals. 3.6 blocks. Wow. Leading the league in blocks as a rookie. And I think conventional wisdom would say this kid, all these numbers going to increase 40% before his career is over. I mean, he's going to, you know, at his peak, he could be averaging 27, 15. Let's keep it four assists. And, and he could average anywhere from four to five blocks a game. On a Spurs team that that will get better, that will definitely get better before you know. I don't think they're you know this is this is as bad as he's going to look. Twenty one, ten, four, and three point five blocks a game. That is. I I've watched some games of his this this in the last month or so. I watched that Knicks game, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Um. He is so fun to watch, and it, it's hard to imagine that this is as bad as he'll ever be. Mm, that's that's true. It's it's crazy to think that there are games where he looks just as good as Jalen Brunson, just as good as Stephen Curry. You know, he tried his best against Jokic in that Denver game a few weeks ago. I mean, and you know, had a pretty good game, had had a handful of blocks on Jokic. 
it's hard to think that this. I mean, he's going to get so much better. So we talk, we talk about Cleveland getting rid of Mitchell or Garland. Imagine if Garland goes to San Antonio, the free agency. I mean, right. I mean they are they trying nice. something like that? I mean, it just gosh, this team. I mean, Webb and Yamas. It's insane. I mean, he's first year. He's in the defensive player of the year conversation. Right. So for his season now, what's his? Do you have his season numbers up? But yeah. yeah, yeah. I know he got like eighteen point nine points. points? Who? Yeah, eighteen point nine is the season stats. Twenty one point four. Twenty one point four. Yeah. Rebounds. 10.6. That's incredible. Blocks is 3.1? 3.6. Ain't no rookie touching that, brother. I'm sorry. It's, it, uh, I mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's it right there. If, if, if you want to go off numbers. Yeah. And, and not just, you know, you look at some of these games. I mean, he had, I mean, let's look at just some of these in the last month or so. Golden State, 32. Golden State game, he had 32, 9, and 5 with three blocks. Denver, 23 mm. points, 15 rebounds, 8 assists, 9 blocks. 9 blocks against Denver. Mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. That is, yeah. Mm-mm. He had 40, 40 points, 20 rebounds, seven assists, and four blocks against New York a month ago. Well, not a month ago, two weeks ago, I mean. So Victor is my rookie of the year right there. His last game that he played was against Denver. Mm-hmm. He had 34 points, 12 rebounds, five assists, two blocks. And that kid's only going to get better. Five of 12 from the three point. He's only gonna get better. So he's yeah, only gonna that's, get better. That's, that's the that's my rookie of the year right there, just Victor. The my only team. reason why Shaq can be arguably is because he has his he has a team in the playoffs. So yeah, but other than that, you're you're a number two guy. He and he is okay. His number is okay, but I like Shaq. We all know how I feel about Shaq. I like Shaq too. I like Shaq a lot. Yeah. But his numbers are not no comparison. I'm not even gonna compare I mean, those two. How many years is it until this guy wins the MVP? Victor? How many years? Or three? Three years? What's the, well, I, w- I wonder what the Vegas odds are on that. How long is it going to take him to win an MVP in this league? I say two. I mean, obviously, it, it would take the team. To, to The team would need to be better. But mm-hmm. he averages just 25 points in the stat line he's averaging right now. That's an MVP season. That's a, good, that's a good – that's a hell of a number right there. Uh, yeah, I just – I've been watching, you know, some of these games he's been on, you know, late in the season, and, I mean, he, yeah. I'm just amazed how good he looks in some of these games, how invincible he looks. I agree. It's too bad that they're not – even close to the playoffs, you know, this is a bad draft, so they're not going to, you know, it's not like they're going to get a big game changer in this draft. No, but like you said, if you can get a Garland or any other type of um, good name over there, it can help the Celtics. It can help the Spurs. Yeah. So I, that's why I feel like maybe if they can go after somebody in free agency. Maybe don't look in the draft. Go after some veterans and then see where it could take you. That's why maybe I could pick like two or three years he could be in the MVP talks because he could have his team up there. Yeah. So I definitely agree with that. Um, Let me ask you something, Ray. Yeah. Two thousand twenty four NBA first team. Who you got? Well, so they're not doing positions anymore, right? I think it's just the five guys. Is it? I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's no positions anymore. 
Oh, shoot. I can give you five guys right now. But if we're going by positions, which is what I would prefer to do, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, one thing before I mark some rabbit games off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want me to uh, name mine first? You can go first, yeah, if, if you have it. All right. All right. Well, if they're not going off positions, then I'm going to pick Giannis. I'm going to pick Luka. I'm going to pick Shy. I'm going to pick Jokic and Jason Tatum. That's my NBA first team. Shy, Luka, Giannis, Jason Tatum, and... Shia. Jason Tatum, Jokic, Shy, Luka, and Giannis. NBA yeah. first team. Mine would be I think I have the same team as you. Yeah. Oh, really? Jokic, okay. Nikola Jokic, Giannis and Tatum. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. Um It hurts to leave Anthony Edwards out. Now, not gonna lie. Um, if I was to do a second team, Anthony Edwards would be on there, including um, Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards, LeBron, Kawhi, and Jalen Brunson will be on my NBA second team roster. Yeah, I will have Brunson, Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards, LeBron, and Kawhi. So, yeah, I, I don't feel bad. I just feel like that's fair. That's a fair second. Um. Yeah, I guess that's that sounds about right. Uh, Davis, Edwards, LeBron, Brunson. Who's your fifth guy? Kawhi. Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, that's a that's a thing, I guess. Um I think. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I guess my last team would be Halliburton. Ah, DeMontis. See, De'Aaron Fox is another guy who I think it's lost in the conversation a lot. Yeah. D-Fox, definitely. It's a bonus. I forgot about that. It's a bonus. Fox. Tyrese, yeah. Um, it's tough, man. Yeah. Kind of KD and book, maybe, or um, definitely, yeah, book. KD definitely book. Um, I don't want to disrespect them and say they could be on the third team or something, but. I mean, I you know it's Paul. Where I mean, is Paul George eligible? I don't think so. No. Twenty-four games. Yeah, it's still seventy-four. With Twenty-two points. I mean, it's tough. I mean, it, because he's had some great games, but that that team has a lot of good scores on. Them. Yeah, he is. I guess I'd go Halliburton, Sabonis, Fox, Paolo. Maybe. Alex. Dame. 
Damn, I don't think I would put him on. Maybe. No, he is in his requirements. Yeah. I, uh... oh, 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 oh. No, I guess Dur I'd put Durant and Booker over Hallow. That's tough. Yeah, that third team is tough. Halbert, Sabonis, Fox, Durant, Booker, and Paolo. All those guys, I think, are – Good third uh, team. One of those guys you have to eliminate. I don't know who, but you have to get rid of one of those guys. I don't know. It's tough. It is. It's tough. Durant over Davis is tough. Or LeBron over Durant. I mean, I don't know. It's it's difficult. I mean, if the Suns are a higher seed, true. They didn't have Bradley Beal for most of the season, so it's tough. All right. Um. Any more? Anything else you want to discuss? I think so. I don't know if I my head. I mean, um, maybe we can do this again when the first round ends. Most definitely. You know, I've uh, two weeks from now. Let's meet back here two weeks from now. Sure. And um, I want to discuss players who was left out of the top seventy-five. Yeah, for sure. sure. Off the uh, anniversary team? Yes, uh, the 75 uh, anniversary team. We could definitely do that sometime. Huh? Now, you... Oh, you want to wait? Or you, you got some players oh, in mind that you feel? I, I, is there anyone that – I mean, you know, I guess Dwight Howard, right? I mean, you, you named one, Paul George. I think he should have been on that 75th anniversary team? I feel he should. Paul George. Uh, shoot, Chris Bosch. Chris Bosch. I feel Chris Bosch. Uh, if you're going to throw Dwight Howard in there. Um, yeah. It's a lot. Even Clay Matumbo. Clay Thompson comes to mind for me. You think Clay Thompson? I would say Clay Thompson above Paul George or Chris Bosch. Dikembe is interesting. Yeah, Dikembe is interesting. Um, yeah. It's a few people that I feel like should have been in there. I Alex, think that. Alex English. Did he not make it really? Hmm. He didn't make it on the team? Alex, yeah, Alex not on there. No. Oh. Top 75. Yeah, he's not on there. Alex is not on there. Wow. Hard to... Yeah, like I say, I think Kyrie could have been on there too. Yeah. When they, I remember when they made the list, my gut reaction was the only guy who I don't think belonged on the list was Carmelo Anthony. Um, and I think Dwight should have made it above him. I mean, it's tough. I mean, you look at guys on the – so it's it's basically it was the 50th anniversary team plus 25 guys, right? I mean, that's basically mm -hmm. what's the list. Yeah, pretty so, much. So, you know, did Dave Bing belong on the list? Did I don't know. I mean Yeah, we could discuss this next episode. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we should. I mean I'd have to go through the list and see who I don't think really belonged the first time around. Yeah. But um and then we could go in and we can add some guys, but so topic next 
That's going to be interesting, too. And then we can go over first rounds and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Man, Ray, this was a pleasure, my brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for allowing me to. It's, a, it's always a pleasure. Yes, sir. So we'll see y'all next time. So like I said, like, uh, subscribe. We're on a road to 5,000 subscribers. So thank y'all very much. Uh, the next episode, I posted the NLG link last night. So I know y'all have all these questions for me so far. Um, damn. We are at 89 questions that I have to answer for y'all. So I will answer those next episode I do. So I look forward to it. That should be a fun episode. And Ray will be back in a couple weeks. And uh, I'll see y'all soon. So remember, no big deal. Follow your dreams. Love you guys. Appreciate you.